Welcome to the Advance Your Art podcast, where we talk about the journey from artist to entrepreneur and everything in between. You've worked hard to hone your craft. Now take it to the next level with tips, techniques, strategies, and routines used by successful artists to grow their businesses and careers. Now, let's get started and have some fun with your host, Yuri Cataldo. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks, Yuri. Thanks for having me on. Of course. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me. So for the, um, my audience, how do you describe yourself and what you do? I describe myself as a book publicist and marketer, and I have been working in this space now for about 10 years, mm-hmm. working with primarily business authors, but I also get sort of the occasional memoir and um, the occasional cookbook or um, you just spirituality <laughs> book <laughs> or yeah there's there's always there's always a something coming in from left field which keeps it really interesting yeah. um, but you know in, just in terms but you, generally speaking it's nonfiction and generally it's business okay that is excellent. that is most of what i do oh excellent that's absolutely sounds fantastic so so i know it's a little bit of a change from what you went to school for. So what did, why did you originally want to, to study public affairs? Well, I, I, you know, I think when I, when I went to college a long time ago, there, it was, it, you know, it was a lot um, less expensive and there was a mm-hmm. lot less pressure on us to know what we wanted to do when we got out of school. And actually at that point I wanted to go to law school. I wanted okay. to be an attorney. And so in my head, you know, public affairs and political science and economics was, well, first of all, it was just interesting. Like mm-hmm. I still, like I read all the time. So, you know, it's, it's, and what I, in terms of the news and books that I choose. Um, so it was, so I, I, I felt that that was good, you know, good base for going to law school. And okay. I, so that was, that was sort of where I, I, I focused. And then I graduated from school and I was going to go to law school and work as a paralegal at the same time in New York City. And I, it just wasn't for me. It just absolutely mm-hmm. wasn't for me. So I, that was very clear after like two days in the law firm. In mm-hmm. those days, we didn't have that kind of shadowing that they do now. I mean, I think we prep our high school kids so much differently than we were, you know, than we were raised in that day and age. So, um, I actually ended up working for a Wall Street bank, Brown Brothers Harriman, for five years in New York mm-hmm. City and in Boston, mm-hmm. and pretty much you, you know, moved on over, ended up on the marketing side of things and the business development side of things. So that is, so it was a very different five years out of school than I had first envisioned, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then, yeah, okay. and then you know, I think as we were chit-chatting about a little bit earlier, you know, I... Um, I also, I wanted to, I wanted to travel. So one of the things I did do when I was working for Brown Brothers is I took great vacations and mm-hmm. I had the opportunity to go to Africa. And I actually, my, my um, apartment mate in New York city was from Southern Africa. And I, um, I ended up after five years working with the wall street bank, I decided to be a Peace Corps volunteer and they gave me the choice of Moscow or Harare in Zimbabwe. And I picked Zimbabwe mm-hmm. because I'd already been there. I knew it was beautiful and amazing and fascinating. And I didn't want to go to Russia. <laughs> so I spent, um, yeah, so I went to, to, to Africa for two years and spent six months traveling out through you know, North Africa and the Middle East. And it was fascinating and a great opportunity to see you know, a, good, a good chunk of, the, of, of a few continents. <laughs> yeah, I bet. But that... So what did you do when you came back? Okay, so when I came back, I spent a few years working um, for the governor's office in Vermont and working in higher ed, um, but also with sort of a business focus. Mm -hmm. And then I got married and had kids and took a, you know, it took a good amount of time off and just made, you know, spaghetti sauce from scratch and pizza from scratch and took my kids to the park and really just focused on my little people, which I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. That was really important for me to just be able to just spend that time and just enjoy them. And after, you know, a certain number of years, you know, it was time for me to make some money and start thinking about, you know, a professional life again. And one of my friends introduced me to um, someone in New York city who actually became my first business author client. And I was Mm -hmm. working with him, not on book, 
things. It, I was working with him much more on like the financial services realm. Okay. And you know, that day, you know, this we we're talking about the, the publishing was and still is to a certain extent being blown up. I mean, you know, 20 years ago, if you wrote a book, your publishing house would do all kinds of nice things for you. They would give you a publicist and a marketing person and they would organize a book tour for you and line up lots of press and line up speaking engagements and, you know, all kinds of great opportunities for you and your book. And now when an author, you know, is put to that book proposal, the publishing house for the most part, you know, they do certain things, but they'll say, well, what are you doing to promote your book? And what kind of audience do you have? And what kind of reach do you have? And what kind of resources are you bringing to the table? And so my first book, that was part of that dynamic where, you know, the publishing house might not, wasn't doing as much as they might've been as as were expected. And, um, and the author had hired another publicist who was, but was interested in, in more, you know, more speaking and more opportunities. And I just loved it. I loved working on the book. And then I, just, you know, how, how life, how, this is how life goes, right? And I went to a New Year's Eve party and I met a branding consultant who became my second client. And then I went to another event and met a TV producer who became my third book client. And from then on in, it's been complete referrals. And it's, you know, it's, sometimes it's from publishing houses and sometimes it's from past clients, but um, it's, it's always, it's a word of mouth dynamic. And I've been working in this space for about 10 years now. Yeah. Wow. That's absolutely, that's, it's fan fantastic that you've had these you know serendipitous types of of uh, relationships that have gone on to be bigger and better things so if an author is listening to this podcast and it's like you know i would like to hear more about your services and and see what that's all about what does the standard type of let's say arrangement look like with an author is there like do they should they come to you when they first have the have a book proposal idea is it when they have a an actual publication date like when do you typically start engaging with with the the the, the writers and and what types of i guess writers are you l- the best at at helping okay so I'll, I'll break that down to three different parts so one is i'm always happy to hop on the phone and kind of work through things for like 30 minutes just to talk and mm-hmm. then beyond that i'm always happy to do like a one hour coaching call because there are a lot of times that you know, I, where I do work with clients who may not be ready for like a full on publicist dynamic retainer relationship, but mm-hmm. they just want some help and they just want some guidance through the process. So I'm always happy to do that. And then most of my work falls into the realm of you. It's most helpful if I start working on a book like three or four months before the book publishes. Okay. That is where the most opportunity in terms of lining things up and getting that long lead out the door and making sure the social media is where it needs to be at and that there's strategy and that there's tactics and all these sorts of things. I mean, really what, you know, every book launch plan is a little bit like a business plan. You have, you know, your goals and your mission and your strategy and your tactics and your, you know, key performance indicators. And so that is, you know, but at the same time, I've certainly been called by authors who are like, my book lo- is just launched and nothing's happening. Can you help me? Or my book launched two months ago and nothing has happened. Can you help me? So, you know, so those are, those are fine. I mean, we make that work, but ideally having a few months before the book launches to, um, you know, to really create a plan and, mm-hmm. and roll out a long lead and is, is, uh, is the most ideal. And then there's also, you know, there are times that I've worked with authors who will come back to me. I have one of these right now that I can't really talk much more about, but it basically he's, it's not even a book. So he's, I've worked with him on multiple books Mm -hmm. and he actually just came back to me and he said, I've got this research project that I have and it's amazing. And I'm working on it with these other, you know, it's a collaboration of other, other authors, ironically, (laughs) and and professionals. And so actually it's a PR project, but it's not a book project. It's Mm -hmm. actually, you know, it's much more about how do we, you know, take this research and roll it out and reveal it in such a way as to maximize its impact on the market and in terms of to you know, maximize its impact you know, on behalf of all these platforms. Mm-hmm. So those are, th- those are sort of the different approaches, if that's helpful. <laughs> yes, that is, that is helpful. So in, I guess in regards to the actual like help that you give authors, so it is, um, what does that fully entail? So an author comes to you and says, great, I'm having a book launch. What, what types of things are they, do you help them with on that? Okay. Well, my first question, because you, there is not enough time or money in the world to do all of everything in this day right. and age. I mean, so the, my first question is really like, what are, what are, what are your goals? Mm-hmm. What are your goals? Where do you want to be five years from now? 
what are your goals for this book? And yes, everybody says that they want to be a New York Times bestseller and I get that. Right. But there's, you know, in terms of what is, you know, what does, and some, some authors will say, I want, I want more speaking engagements or I want to double my speaking fee. Some will say, I just want another book because I want to keep my day job, but I really like writing. So I, yeah, I just, you know, I just want to do a good job. Like, overall on a book rollout so that right. I get another book contract. Um, so yeah. I think so much of it, and that's why I begin because you, it, it's, you're not everybody. And also different things move the needle for different authors. Mm -hmm. So I have worked with authors who they can get on long form radio and Amazon goes up. Like it really moves the needle. You know, some authors can do TV, you know, they're very good on, you know, on video, that's super helpful. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody is, you know, is really comfortable with public speaking. Some, you know, love it. Some get paid a lot of money for it. Mm -hmm. But I think, and it also, you know, I think it's like what moves the needle for the author. And sometimes, and that's where it's, it gets a little bit, um, there's a little bit of, you know, alchemy because I don't know at the beginning and the author really doesn't know either. I mean, I think the author knows what she is good at and what they're told they're good at and what sort of worked for them in the past. I can look at the platform and take some guesses, but I think a large part of the beginning is doing some sort of beta testing and trying mm -hmm. different things and seeing where traction is and where the needle moves and then focusing more in on that. Does that make sense? Yes, that does make sense. Okay. Great. So it's, so th those are really the two components. It's okay. you know, one starting with their goals mm -hmm. and then B, you know, that, that's, you know, and then two focusing also, you know, finding out like where, you know, just where their light is, where, you know, where they, where things can, ha will happen for them. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. And so is it with part of this, so I, I know you're based out of New York. Is it, do you find that it's easier to work with authors that are, let's say, in closer proximity to you or does it matter where the authors live? You know, that's so interesting because when I first started doing this, almost everybody was in New York and mm -hmm. once in a while I had somebody in London, you know, but generally it was, you know, but now it's, you know, in the past few years right now, you know, I, in the past, in the past three years, I've always had a client in Texas, sometimes two. <laughs> um, I've always had a client in California, sometimes two. Mm -hmm. So as well as New York, but the nice thing about New York, as as you know in Boston too, everybody comes to New York. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it does. So it yeah, so it really is um, an easy place to meet someone and catch up and meet in person and then you know work for a few hours and just you know connect in person. But at the same time, I've definitely um, you know I I just spent a week in LA a few weeks ago. I've been in Texas twice in the past year. And mm -hmm. that was, that's, that's different than it was when I first started doing this. Mm -hmm. With uh, so I guess the different authors that come to you, how do you um, kind of work with them when they are apprehensive to do, let's say like some of the social engagements? Like, cause as you're right, like not all, not every author is a good public speaker or, you know, a good interviewer or, you know, good at a lot of different things. Do you coach them and work with them to get better in certain of these areas or, or do you just focus on kind of what their strengths are? Honestly, and this is a, <laughs> this is a little trade secret. <laughs> yeah. So basically I, you know, if, if, and I do, I definitely have authors that don't like social media. don't want to deal with social media. We do it. I just include in the retainer and I outsource it. And I, I've worked with somebody for years. Ah. He's good at it. Knows <laughs> his stuff. Yeah. yeah. And he just does it. Yeah. You know, he's good at video. And yeah. You know, so it's just, you know, great content creator. So I think that there, you know, there are also, you know, I have clients who, you know, this, their social media is their bread and butter and their influencers and, and that's great. You know, then mm -hmm. they drive and I don't really do anything on their social media because they, you know, they just, they own it. But okay. I definitely, when I have authors who are apprehensive, it's, it's not, you know, because I think that it's, it's never worth arguing with a client over they should do social media. It's like, I need them to have social media Mm -hmm. But if they don't want to do it, then I just wrap it into the services I provide. And then okay. they don't have to do much. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> so. yeah. Of the social media that you prefer your your um, writers use, is there like one over the other? Or is it just whichever one they are the most proficient at? Well, I think the, what, whichever one they're most proficient at is always good. Um, you know, tw the media lives on Twitter. Okay. As, you know, so, so Twitter is in, and a lot of authors don't, you know, they, they don't really know how to use Twitter and that's great. They don't have yeah. to, but, um, but the media lives on Twitter. So uh, you know, it's, and, and then, and, and, and Instagram. So one of those has to be in the mix and you know, more Twitter than 